Hey, what is going on, people of the internet? Welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. I'm Andrew. And I'm David. And we're back in the studio. Uh, not as much happening this week. Obviously, last week was pretty crazy. We shot that in the hotel room right after Google I.O. with all our reactions to everything. We brought all our equipment back and set it all up, and hopefully everything looks the way it should. Um, but we do have some stuff to talk about. Uh, we've got some random, I'd, I'd call it like a mixed bag of features. We've got yeah. Pixel as a dash cam. We've got a bunch of Twitter alternatives that we've tried. We've got CarPlay for EVs coming to the Porsche Taycan that I have strong feelings about. Uh, we're going to wrap it up with a random free TVs question mark. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's just free TVs question mark. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. Uh, it's but exciting. we should definitely, I kind of want to. We made the joke last week that the biggest news was Final Cut coming to the iPad. Final Cut and Logic did actually come to the iPad, and we do actually want to talk about it a little bit because it is pretty mm -hmm. cool. We're gonna try this when we get when we get our hands on both of these apps. But the news is Final Cut Pro has finally come to the iPad Pro. We've been saying, how can you call it a Pro iPad if it has no Pro apps? Well, here is Final Cut Pro, and is Logic called Logic Pro also, or is it just Logic? Uh, it's Logic it's, Pro. It's Logic Final Pro. Cut Pro and okay. Logic Pro. Okay, so Pro yeah. apps come to the Pro iPad. Um, but also more than just the Pro iPad, it's all the Apple Silicon iPads uh, and even the A12Z iPad just for Logic. Yeah. But Final Cut Pro is M1 or later. Okay. It's, which includes iPad Air. So it's not just the Pro iPads. It's not just the Pro iPads. So, but it's definitely including the Pro iPads because you can't call it a Pro iPad with no Pro apps. But the, I feel like that saying is totally done if then you also put it on the, no, the non-Pro non versions. Yeah, yeah. It kind of deflates that a little bit. But, you know... We were looking forward to this. We've been asking about this. Yeah. So the real questions uh, as we look at these web pages, honestly, for me, number one is feature parity between the iPad version of Final Cut Pro and the Mac version of Final Cut Pro that we've been using for so long. And then the other number two biggest difference is pricing. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll do feature parity first. I, right now, edit in Final Cut Pro every single video that we make. And Mariah also edits in Final Cut Pro for MKBHD videos. And what we have to do to get Final Cut Pro to see red footage is we need a plugin. It's called the Red Workflow Installer. And it gets installed on the Mac, and it's a plugin for Final Cut Pro on the Mac. And if you don't have that plugin, it can't see or import any of the media that we shoot. Can I do that on the iPad? I don't know. Big question mark. Big question yeah. mark. Uh, it, there appears to be some sort of plugins that Apple is making and maybe that means there will be plugins for Final Cut Pro for the iPad but I don't think this is me speculating I don't think that Final Cut plugins on the Mac will work on the iPad and so then the next question is if I have a project that I'm working on on one of them can I move it to the other and will everything work so will all my fonts will all my titles will yeah. all my transitions stay yeah. probably but will my Will my plugins stay? Probably not. So it's Final Cut Pro in the sense of UI, but it's not quite Final Cut Pro in the sense of full continuity. I can do everything on one that I could do on the other. Yeah, I think a big question is that it seems like they want you to be able to like import footage, start your edit, very basic stuff on your iPad, like when you're on the bus or on the train or something, and then you get home, mm -hmm. you plug into your Mac, and then you're able to just move over and do all the rest of the editing on a Mac. I f it, f it feels like that's their main kind of idea for this. In that direction, makes sense. Right, but it's just, if you don't have feature parity, it just makes things really awkward. Because if I'm doing a bunch of stuff on the Mac and I just want to get off my desk and go sit on the couch with the iPad, it might not be able to do yeah. all the things. It might not be able to import all the things that I was just working on. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of interesting. I mean, we've had other video editing apps on the iPad that are pretty decent and sort of standalone. Like we have iMovie. Actually, that's a good question. Does iMovie have feature parity between the Mac and the iPad? I don't actually know. It's a great question. I've there's not no used plugins. iMovie in a long time. I yeah. imagine you can move an iMovie project from any iPhone to iPad to Mac. But I if there's like that no plugins or anything, I'm sure you. I don't even know if there are iMovie plugins. I doubt it. But it's iMovie, it's LumaFusion, it's CapCut, it's all the others. I just, the reason for adding Final Cut Pro to the mix is there are certain people who want Final Cut Pro stuff. And I guess on the iPad, that's just UI. This might be a stupid question. And I'm, I realize that. But so you it. can ask me. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, when I first think plugins on Final Cut obviously won't work on iPad, but now that we're 
using Apple Silicon in both, it does seem like there's potential for that to be an easier transition between the two of them. Yes. But then I guess we're still going between Mac OS and iPad OS. Is that where we're coming to the issue on that? I think so. I think they probably rebuilt the entire app. I don't think they ported it. I'm pretty sure they just rebuilt it. Yeah, I just wonder if... (sighs) In terms of the plugins working, I guess it would have to be the people who are creating those plugins have a separate version They'll that works at, at iPad OS. Yeah, yeah, an iPad version. It's probably phone. easier to do, but not ready. We should try. Yeah. We have an MPHD yeah. plugin with Motion VFX. We should try we should to see what try. the process is to make an iPad version of the plugin. Yeah. They said that there. Did they say there will be plugins coming? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I don't. I think that was the one thing that I was trying to figure out from them is there are no plugins now. Is that coming? And I don't think we have an answer on that firmly. That's also one of those questions where like I don't know which way to lean. If they haven't mentioned anything about plugins, is it we don't expect to put plugins or it's Final Cut Pro? That's such an obvious yes. We mm-hmm. just didn't mention it in the release. Yeah. Wh- which way would you think they're lead? Uh, it's funny. Well, I'm on the oh. page for where they released Logic and Final Cut, and in mm-hmm. I searched plug for like plugin, like did a find in page Nothing. for Logic plugin, 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 oh, plugin, yeah, plugin, yeah, yeah. plugin. Well, that's all Logic. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't seem like Final Cut. They'd mention anything about plugins. It is not mentioned at all. That seems oh. bad and annoying because the main reason that I actually kind of like Final Cut is because of all the plugins that we have through Motion VFX. I really like the MKBHD plugins that we made specifically mm-hmm. because it just makes it easier for us to like edit our videos yeah um and without that it there's not a lot of benefits besides like easier transcoding of like prores footage and then also just the fact that it saves constantly because uh that's Pre- premiere just crashes all yeah the i was time. about to say so i was going to mention that uh plugins are like the second most useful thing to me about Final Cut Pro, but yeah. autosave is actually going to top all of what I was going to talk about. Yeah. Because I'd lose a project in Premiere back in the day and I would reopen it and I'd cross my fingers and it would be like four hours behind mm-hmm. and I would f- collapse into a puddle of tears. Oh, yeah. So uh, autosave, really high on the list. It should still have that. Wait, sorry. Does Premiere not have autosave? It does, it but does, it's not no. like constantly it's updated. Not constantly. Oh, okay. Like when I crash out of Premiere and I reopen it, it's three seconds ago, whatever I was just doing. Or fi- Final Which, Cut, Final, or Final Cut yeah, Pro. Yeah. Sorry, I was like, yeah. "Damn, you want faster no, than yeah. three seconds?" <laughs> no, I need two microseconds. <laughs> once every once in a while in Premiere, and in yeah. Final Cut, it's very, very often, and that can actually work against me because if I just added something to my timeline which starts bugging and Final Cut crashes, and I reopen it, it it's will still saved. be on that timeline, <laughs> and then it'll crash really fast again. Yeah, so that's Man. that's bite me a few times. Yeah. Um, For Premiere, it's like you have to go into this weird subfolder of a subfolder of a subfolder to find like your auto saves. Yep. And you just have to pray that maybe it decided to auto save recently. Mm-hmm. But uh, to your point about it auto saving all the time and sometimes that screws you over. Yeah, I've had it happen before where I make a catastrophic change mm-hmm. by accident and then it crashes oh. and I'm just screwed oh, because I can't control Z <laughs> no. and I have to redo the entire project and it's awful. But that's rough. You know, I, it would be nice if they had a mix of both. Anyway. But I, yeah, Final Cut. I, the reason we're excited about Final Cut is because I like Final Cut on the Mac. And so I wonder, is it going to be better than other video editors on the iPad? And is it going to be uh, a nice way of continuing my edit from the Mac? Those are the two things I'm wondering going into this and that I'm going to have to try. Continuing your edit from the Mac or starting or your starting, edit to the Mac? Starting the edit. That seems much more plausible, in. what David said. Yeah, yeah I I'm, feel like rough cuts with the pencil, just like chopping it up before I move it to the Mac, that might be... I'm almost thinking of like what David said as like, you're going to shoot on location, you're taking the train back, why not use that dead time to not just like start importing to throw on the timeline to get and then bring it in? Then you don't have to like sit on the train for an hour, get home, and then sit at your computer. And the fact while that you're you can importing. do it with your fingers, like with your hand, yeah, you can just pencil. sit on a train and you're just like yeah. editing with the pencil or your hand. It like, does have full pencil support. It seems like there's a couple cool things you can use the hover feature to skim through footage and mm-hmm. like, and then also there's a couple like accessibility features almost where there's like an extra jog wheel on the side now to scroll faster through everything. Yeah, so they thought about it. It does look like they're thinking about it more than just like slapping it into iPad OS and love that wishing you luck. So Been asking for that. There's so also you, a drawing feature that is really cool. Oh, I, yeah. Yeah, if you use the pencil, you can draw your own on like video. animations on top of the video and it smooths it out for you too. So if you like if you 
you know, not super seamlessly draw a circle or something, but you're kind of like drawing pieces of the circle, it'll like smooth it it'll out, smooth out and your make it feel like a smooth animation. And make it a title, yeah. It's really cool because usually you have to like find uh, like video overlays online and like these like animated video overlays that you can put on your video. But the fact that you can just draw whatever you want. I want to draw arrows all the time. I was going to oh, say, yeah. I'm putting arrows in all our videos now. This sounds super Casey <laughs> Nice that. Like, yeah, I, you yeah. have to do procreate and just make it green mm -hmm. and then draw on it and then just key out the green. Yeah, yeah. the keying was annoying. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I wouldn't always key perfectly either if you had soft edges. Uh -huh. Yeah. So let's talk about the price. It is $5 every month forever. <laughs> every... <laughs> Not every month that you yeah. pay it. Every month that you... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we actually don't know. Okay, so just for those who don't know, Final Cut Pro is actually kind of a bargain on the Mac. I would be willing to argue this. It's absolutely It's, I think, $500. $300. $300. Oh, it's $299, yeah. right? $299. Yeah. But you only pay it once, mm -hmm. and you get unlimited licenses and unlimited updates on every Mac forever. Mm -hmm. That is a bargain. Insanely good deal. The amount of value we get out of Final Cut Pro on one Mac, 300 bucks, I would pay it. But we get 300 bucks on every every time I switch Macs, I get Final Cut Pro latest version and just right up to date and it just keeps going. And I've had it for years. Yeah. So 300 bucks, that was awesome. This one is a subscription model. Yeah. And so I, I think the way this works is you have an iPad, you download Final Cut Pro, you subscribe. It'll be either, I think, 50 bucks a year or, or yeah, you yeah. get the first month yeah. free and it's 50 bucks a year. Or you, you do monthly, you get the first month free and it's five bucks a month. Is yeah. it? I just, yeah, I assumed it was just a little bit uh, of a discount for discount if you do for a straight year. year yeah. uh, and you can pay that every single month that you use it. And I imagine you can cancel your subscription if you're going to stop using it for several months, but then maybe you need it again in December. You subscribe it again. It's five bucks for a month. So more flexible but still it's like a subscription and now we're wondering like does that mean they're going to make the mac version a subscription also can i subscribe on one ipad and then when i change over ipads hopefully mm -hmm. hopefully that still translates i should have it on every ipad i don't think it would be possible to switch the mac version to a subscription because people already paid they, you, would, you would have to release Final Cut 11 and say, uh, everyone that has Final Cut 10 has it, but if you want 11, you want all these new AI features or whatever, then it's mm. going to be $5 a month. Yeah. Because that's what Adobe did, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you used to be able to buy full versions of Adobe and apps. It would be like, how much was Premiere? Probably 600 bucks. Um, 700 bucks, something like that. I don't know how much it cost. Were you buying the remember, suites? You were buying like the CS6 suite. I mean, right? there's so many versions of this, but I just remember back in college, it was like, after Effects would be seven hundred bucks. Premiere would be six hundred bucks. Photoshop would be four hundred bucks. And if you wanted several of them, you could buy a suite that had like a, a, a combo of them, and mm -hmm. it would be a very expensive suite. And so when they came out with this subscription thing, at least it wasn't thousands of dollars up front. Yeah. But it it now means for you over time, time will pay more because yeah. you are paying for the rest of time. Yeah. Uh, whether it's fifty or hundred or however many dollars you pay, I use Lightroom regularly. I use you know, we have Photoshop in the studio. Obviously, After Effects is very useful for Michael for animation. So it works out that we get our value out of it. But I don't, not everybody's going to love the subscription thing. No, I, I feel like I can argue both ways for the Final Cut on iPad. It, in a sense, if you're, you know, maybe taking a month where you're shooting on location somewhere and the iPad feels like it might help you out in some traveling, like, cool, I can pay five bucks for one month and get this like really awesome tool that's going to help me. In the other sense, you spent three hundred dollars on Final Cut Pro and have it on basically unlimited Macs that you've ever used, and you have to buy it again. And now you have to buy it again. After There's also you already like this, own Final Cut, which this seems crazy. Application is not exactly the most simple application. I feel like people that are using it on their iPad probably know how to use it on their Mac, and it seems weird to only be like, "Yeah, I only want it for one month for one yeah. project." If you're if you're only using it for one project, you'd probably just use iMovie, right? That's what I keep picturing. Yeah. Like the person who has Final Cut Pro uses it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'm saying it more for like if that form factor for some weird scenario you're in. Oh, I see. Uh, like that's when maybe it could be beneficial. Like on location, you're traveling for a month or you're going, you're taking the train a bunch or you're flying a bunch. Maybe so that you, could be a you little sort of nicer. situationally subscribe to it for yeah, like a month or two when you need of, it. And kind then, of like how we've talked about uh, like autopilot in the past. Like maybe you're uh, taking a month where you're road tripping and you're like, uh, if it's subscription based, then I can pay $10 for that month and I'll take the benefit, but I'm not going to pay the whole year of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll it's see. it's yeah. good and bad. Ellis, 
Logic for iPad, does that intrigue you at all? Because this is plug-in land, and they seem to support everything. Yeah, well, <clears throat> they support everything, like, asterisk. You know what I mean? So, like, mm. audio, uh, the the Logic Apple audio sphere uses pretty much one kind of plug-in exclusively. It's called an audio unit. And I'm pretty sure it's actually developed by Apple. Mm -hmm. It's like all of the infrastructure for it is baked into what's called like core audio, which is the audio engine for pretty much all of Apple's products. Um, so like GarageBand on the iPad has had a third party plugin ecosystem for quite a while. Right. Yeah, like a long time. So all of those same plugins that work in GarageBand like automatically work, will now, will now work in Logic. I'm a little bit skeptical, A, because Logic already has a companion app for the iPad that's just like a controller. That's pretty sweet. You know, it's like different. It's not the standalone app. You'll still need the Mac, but e this exactly. will supplement some functionality. Yeah, but so I'm like, I'm pretty, I know that like Logic works well on a touchscreen already mm. because the companion app. The thing that I'm really curious about is that as far as I know, you can only run these plugins, which is an existing format that goes like almost a decade back now. Mm -hmm. um, you can only run them in what's called like an, an, as an extension where you download an app from the app store and baked into that app is an extension that lets other apps know like, hey, I can weasel into this app and use it in another app. Yeah. And that's frustrating because on the Mac, I can just download these little tiny files, like a few megabytes, throw them into the folder in my like deep library. And then I'm running those plugins in like a second. There's like no installation process. It doesn't need to throw assets anywhere. Hmm. Um, and I don't think the iPad lets you that deep into the file structure to get that done, right? It, yeah, it sounds like they're gonna have to hide that from the user. It's frustrating because we all know in our hearts, I could just pull these plugins off my computer and there's no reason why they couldn't just run. The other thing that makes logic for iPad really, really cool is Apple has this way um, in iOS of being able to pipe audio from one application to another, which on a Mac is not impossible, but it gets really, really like funky really, really quick. You have to like trick your computer into thinking you've got multiple drivers going at once and like mm -hmm. it doesn't really work that well. So the iPad has already been this really cool music making tool for years because you can do, you can run multiple apps in tandem in a way that you actually can't do on a computer and get these like new mm -hmm. and interesting sounds. Um, so I'm all for, I'm, I can't wait to get my hands on it. Um, but there isn't like a thing that I'm like, oh man, you know, I yeah. and I, uh, this is like mostly a me thing, but I don't think there's a score editor in logic for the iPad. Like in logic for the Mac, I could input notes as like notes on a stave. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it doesn't seem like they're, I don't, I mean, that I understand be, why, but that would seem like that'd be super cool. Cause you have a pencil that like <laughs> seems to make the most sense. I the more I think about these tools, it's it feels like Apple realizes a lot of people's primary computers are their iPhones. And for a lot of people who don't feel like graduating to a Mac, their like biggest, most powerful computer is their iPad. And so if they never get a Mac, they can still use Logic or Final Cut Pro. And it might not have full feature parity for us psychos who want to like swap back and forth between the Mac and the iPad, but there's going to be a lot of people who just unlocked a lot of functionality, which is probably the upside that we are all looking for. And we'll see how people feel about the price. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's it. That's lots of logic in Final Cut Pro. We've now talked about it for real instead of in a joking way <laughs> before the other pod. Mm -hmm. um, what else do we want to mention here? We want to talk okay. about the dash cam thing. Yeah, yeah. I... Adam posted this this morning, and I read the article. Um, I just saw the headline. It's really cool. It is cool. Did you see it? Yeah, I, yeah. It, I read it so yesterday. Nine to five Google found. Also, I want to throw this out there. Am I the only one who just learned what a dog food build is this morning? Yes, I think so. I'm about to. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay. Okay. That makes. I knew you would know it. You told me you knew it. Okay, yeah. it's apparently just be basically before alpha or beta, when developers are cr or like a team is working on something. It's just a they can push it to their phone they'll to call live like, quality assurance. Yeah, they'll food. test dog it. Food, peop, the people who are working on the app basically will internal test. They'll, dog, they'll yeah, test the dog yeah. food version of the app. So like when they're testing a Pixel before it comes out with a bunch of new apps on it, those are dog food builds. So when you so, work at Google and you're not on a team that's building a specific app, that team will want feedback from people who are not on the team. Yeah. And they'll tell other people at Google, hey, do you want to test this? Here's a dog food build. Please don't share it. Do and they then say, you, send it to the dogs? <laughs> 
Hey, yo. We got some kibble. We, we, we got, got some kibble we got for some you. Scraps. Let's give it to the dog. <laughs> I just want to say, we got some bacon. <laughs> this morning, only Miles and Marquez were in, and I was like, "Do you guys know what a dog food build is?" And Miles was like. It sounds like a bodybuilder who's just like really jacked and looks like he's just eating dog food dog all food day. <laughs> he's got that dog in him. Yeah. He's got that dog food build. That's so, actually hilarious. Is dog food like super high nutrition? Can I think I it's like, got a lot of protein. Oh my in goodness. It. Actually, yeah. It does. I, I'm not, gonna, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not saying eat it. it. I would not eat it. Doing that. Well, last Dr. Mike. But, yeah. um, okay. I, I would not eat dog food. Andrew <laughs> Manganella 2023. Good to know. Anyway, you so do you, this? man. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, what was dog fooded inside of Google? Um, so, we all we know that like Apple and Google have been doing all these different like safety features, especially crash, crash detection. Mm-hmm. So, it seems like within this personal safety feature, there's going to be a new dash cam feature. Which mm. is one of these things that I feel like makes perfect sense on like a phone. It does. Um, I don't know how it's taken this long, but not they they were able to the people at nine to five Google were able to try it out. I think or at least scroll through all oh, the wow. different mm. um, like features of it. So Google's we have the features so bad and it's at keeping things a secret, man. Yeah, Google's I'm also the surprised they're. I guess they're probably not done with it yet. I, this would have been an awesome IO. Yeah. Announcement. Well, they always like even in just rank random developer betas and stuff if they don't release a feature sometimes they'll just put references to that feature in the code mm-hmm. and so it's really easy to spot new features that way mm-hmm. yeah i feel like there's a one team working on a thing and then another team that's like we need the ui to be ready for when we drop the thing in and so the team that's ready for the ui will like put the hooks in in mm-hmm. the code but the feature's not ready yet so we just see the references to it but not the thing yeah kind of like this mm-hmm so uh, we have a bunch of features already, and I, I think they're kind of cool. Um, so it. there will be background recording, which lets you still be able to do everything on your phone while it's recording. M- mostly if we're driving, we're assuming that's like showing maps and navigation. So your phone's in your dash. Yep. It's, point, it's pointed forward. Like normal. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously see. it needs to be in a spot that's actually looking at the road. So the camera's pointed out the road. Yep. There's also a front-facing camera. That's something I want to get to later, actually. You. Okay. Um, it seems so like right now it's only rear video. Okay. Um, but yeah, so your phone can still be displaying whatever you have on it, calls, music, maps, navigation, and it'll be recording through the back. Um, all videos will un- will be auto-deleted after three days. It oh. will auto-start recording once it recognizes a Bluetooth device connected that you set as like your car. So you yep. don't have to worry about going into that menu every time and pressing record. Mm-hmm. It's um, compressed to save space without losing quality which I still don't really know what that means because I feel like you're always going to lose quality. It's pretty classic. But one minute will be about 30 megabytes, so that it's not like taking it. That seems like a lot. <laughs> I, it like I is read and... that, and it was like, yeah, only 30 megabytes per minute. And it was like, if you drive for an hour, that's 60 times 30. Wait, that's, one minute is 30 that's megabytes? That's 1.8 gigs, right? Nah, or, that's 900 megabytes. Nine. 60 times? Oh, no, no, you're right, 1.8. Yeah, 1.8. I can do basic that's math. Okay. Uh, you made um, me feel like I couldn't first. <laughs> which I guess 1.8 gigs is not bad, but like if it saves for three days and you drive, I drive for at least two hours a day, mm-hmm. so that's six hours. Uh, well, I can't really I mean, but if you... Six, s- s- 12 gigs. Let's just say four gigs in a day, uh-huh. right? And then three days, so 12 gigs, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's not a, that bad. It's a decent, it's amount, a decent amount, but if you're keeping your storage relatively okay yeah. judging on your tabs normally i'm gonna assume your storage <laughs> might be an issue but um I don't, Shots fired. <laughs> sorry. but auto ram okay. auto delete after three days and then yeah. 12 gigs i don't know and it can record up to 24 hours so it can do longer wow recordings that's a that's a lot of uh-huh. footage that's a lot of footage and a lot of driving um that's yeah a lot, and a lot of driving yet we gotta say we gotta <laughs> clip that that was literally the exact same time <laughs> we, we said that Wait, Wait, we said it so asynchronously that I didn't even hear you say it. I, yeah, I exactly. also, Oh, you said it? We said it at the exact <laughs> I didn't hear him say it. I thought you just meant his like cadence was the same Wait, of how no, it normally is. We both started saying it at roughly the same time, but we said the word data like overlapped perfectly. Wow, Did you even press the button? Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was pretty good. I didn't miss it either. Also, wait, while we stopped the conversation, I looked up the origin of the dog food thing. <laughs> okay. And it's because there's a famous commercial for uh, the, the Alpo... Alpo dog food brand from the 70s where Lauren Green, the celebrity actor in Dorsey, says that he feeds his own dog at home, Alpo dog food. 
Then there's this other, this sounds like an urban legend. What? Apparently, well, no, it's like a commercial. He's like, commercial. He's like Alpo dog food is like the fuck best or whatever, you know what I mean? And then he's like, and by the way, I actually at home like feed my real life dog. This yeah. is using I like, it at I home. dog food test this oh, yeah. product yeah. on my own dog. But then there's an urban legend <laughs> that the CEO of the Cal Can Pet Food Company oh would God. eat a can of no. the company's Jesus. dog food no. at the annual shareholders no. meeting. No, no. Seems a little urban legendy, but. Uh, no, I and, believe that. And then we actually have evidence. <laughs> I buy that. In the, I think it was the late 80s of, a, a 1988, yeah, a Microsoft manager um, sent an internal email titled, Eating Our Own Dog Food, as a reference to uh, those dog commercials. Food. Wow. Cemented. Wow. Weird. I love that. That's a hell of a reference. Next long form? <laughs> <laughs> That's all going in the podcast. We need that. Um, um, no, I think the dash cam thing is cool. Most I don't have a, a thing that props my phone up, so my phone's resting on yeah, a charger. That's the so first thing. Yeah. You have to be someone who has your phone up. And I also I was just saying this in, in an autofocus video recently. These cars that are coming out now that are all new all have so many cameras, but none of them have a dash cam feature. Yeah, the Rivian just got a software update. Mm -hmm. uh, where you can plug in a flash drive and it's called like drive cam or something and it will save automatically as you're driving. So if there's an incident or you hit your horn or you hit the button, it saves the last two minutes of footage. So obvious. It seems so it easy, so yeah. obvious. Tesla didn't have it forever. They finally added it. You just plug in a flash drive. Every car with cameras all over the car should have a USB port you can plug in and have a built-in dash cam feature. I mean, every phone should have it, I feel like, at this point. The it's, phone thing is tough because it's resource intensive and your yeah. phone's got to be capable enough to do dash cam recording. Like, remember we just saw this CarPlay issue where if you were running CarPlay and recording on the phone at the same time, it would turn into a stuttery, janky mess. Mm -hmm. That's the most powerful iPhone that exists that still has that problem. That sounds like something they could probably fix if they actually looked into Maybe. it. I yeah. hope so. But the fact is, like, if you're recording high bitrate video on your phone, that's a lot of processing power, and you also want to be able to do other stuff smoothly on your phone. So maybe not every phone's going to be able to do that, but yes, high-end phones I, should be able to do that. I think they should be able to do and it. And you should be able to pop it right up in your yeah. dashboard and have a dash cam. Recording even 720p video for like up to over an hour at a time driving is going to use a lot of your battery on your phone. It's going to make it really Yeah, but it'll hot. be plugged in because it's in your car. Not always. It doesn't have. I to think be if you're in, doing this, if you're, it doesn't this, have to be plugged in. But if you're in your car, I think it'll be plugged in. Yeah. If it's in that position, something that I think it would be cool if they added. Um, they already have like crash detection and stuff, mm -hmm. but because they have a dash cam, it would be nice if it didn't have to be like mounted, seeing the front of you. If it could just be like in the cradle, like in a Tesla, where it, it's charging in the cradle, and if it was mm -hmm. recording with the front camera, because you're using a dash cam, you can kind of understand where you got hit from. Right. Or if you were the person that hit the person in, in front of you or if you got hit. Could be useful. Like it should be able to understand that information. Yeah. Um, that'd be really useful because then you could like give that to the cops if someone tried to pretend they like you hit them when they actually hit you. Or Hopefully something. it's yeah. accurate. Enough. I think I think yeah. the best way of implementing it would be if it's if it's in the spot facing forward, it's recording front and back because yeah. front self because like most dash cams, the higher end dash cams coming out now and you see them in Uber drivers all the time are facing both directions. Yeah, so you can yep. see inside the car, but like, yeah, you can get hit from four sides on right. a car. So forward's not always the best spot. Correct. Yeah. Um, and especially rear ending is the one that you want to prove you're not at fault. Like, yeah. so like seeing behind you is super important. That's it, why in California, if you get rear ended, the person who rear ended is, you is automatically yep. at fault. Even if you like back into them, they're at fault because wow. they should have been able to evade it. Jeez. <laughs> Which is kind of insane. Rough. Um, but yeah, it it also would be good for, <laughs> Yeah, <clears throat> I think it was, Apple a little while didn't they do the thing where you can ask tell Siri you're getting pulled over and it will start video recording that was a um someone made a An shortcut app. for that oh okay yeah I, like this would be good for that too if it's selfie camera as well like it's just recording when it's in the car so mm -hmm. if you get pulled over you have the extra recording process that goes through being pulled over yeah 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 Makes sense. But also one one last thing. Okay. Uh, it's not going to necessarily be Pixel exclusive. Apparently, this is also coming to the Nothing Phone 1. Uh, and it's then dumb. there's nothing in the code that says Pixel exclusive. Yeah. So they're saying this could pretty easily move to other, f other phones. I hope so. Okay, perfect. One more quick thing that just makes sense. Uh, Apple CarPlay, we've talked about this in previous videos. In your car doesn't know much about your car. It's just kind of being projected from your iPhone. And so if you're in an electric car, 
If you want to plan a road trip with like lots of charging stops and all that stuff, you will have to use the car's built-in software to know what percentage battery you'll have when you arrive at the charger and all that fun stuff because CarPlay doesn't know that. Porsche just announced that they're going to be supporting an update of CarPlay called CarPlay EV in the Taycan, which does know your car's state of charge and knows where you can charge, which just makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. So really the, the whole point is you will be able to plan a road trip and continue to use Apple CarPlay because now it'll know, okay, you have 25% battery left and you just put in a destination 200 miles away, so I'm going to route you to this charger where you charge for this long and you know finish your road trip like this. Mm -hmm just makes sense. I'm glad that exists. The question still is like, okay, what manufacturers are going to put this in their cars versus like yes. trying to maintain their own awesome software experience? <laughs> that, that's the thing. I think it makes those people who claim, who don't want to use CarPlay, or, we can assume this is going to come to Android Auto at some point too, right? It like if CarPlay sense. is going to, it's they're all going to have to because EVs are becoming more and more popular. Both are going to need this. It's making those companies way harder to convince you like you don't need the better that's car the play easiest, gets the yeah. harder the argument is to not include it i think the easiest way to tell customers you're not including carplay or android auto is like well the charging stations and like being knowing your current charge and everything mm -hmm. now you're just gonna have to straight up be like well we want your information so that's yeah. No. Yeah. No, I no. did re I read the whole press release. There's nothing in here about preconditioning a battery. Like it does automatically suggest charging routes and uses elevation and everything to know like how much battery you'll have when you arrive at your destination and it knows about your car and all that is super cool. But I don't know if it'll do everything that the built in car navigation will do. Like when you're driving a Tesla to a supercharger, it knows that it's a supercharger and so it knows that it can precondition the battery starting when you're right. five minutes away to reach a certain temperature so as soon as you plug in it's the point. max charging speed mm. i don't know if carplay ev is going to be able to tell the car to do that yeah i doubt it i would guess that the carplay ev is just doing some sort of handshake and like calling it calling an api it's yeah, probably just, just it's like call api function state of charge from the car yeah but i doubt that it's able to like I, I doubt that the car is able to call something from the phone or not phone, but from CarPlay itself. If CarPlay, essentially the phone, though. Yeah, 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 yeah essentially the phone. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if CarPlay is going to be able to tell the car start preconditioning the battery. Yeah, not I sure doubt it. I highly doubt it. I would, I would bet it's just the phone gets to take information from the car and it's a one-way pipeline. Yeah, just yeah. ask Siri. It's a step in the right direction, though. <laughs> Siri, <laughs> precondition the battery. I'm almost there. I have so much to say about car voice assistance, but we'll we'll get in the weeds too fast, so we'll have to take a quick break for now. Uh, but before we do that, let's do trivia. Trivia, mm. dude. All right. All right. Whoa. Nice. So, as always, the answers will be at the end. Um, also, this question sounds a lot harder than it is. It just takes a lot of uh, explaining, so don't be intimidated. I hate it already. The question takes explaining? Okay. I didn't write this. I was, just gonna, <laughs> I was literally just going to say, is this an Alice question? No, it's a me question. Okay. So we were talking about Final Cut on the iPad Pro and iPad Air before. Mm -hmm. Both displays use the P3 wide color gamut, which is a variant of the DCI P3 color space. Uh -huh. With me so far? Yeah. That's it. That's so simple. For DCI P3... Rec 709, sRGB, and Adobe RGB, mm. basically all of the display color thingies. <laughs> the color at wavelength 464.2 nanometers is the same for all of them. What is wrong what with you? Color is what that? is wrong with you, Adam? <laughs> Why would we know the answer <laughs> to this? What is wrong with you? Why would we know this? 464 nanometers. That's all you need to think about. Yeah. The way nobody knows that is 464 nanometers. Nobody just knows what color is at 464 nanometers. All you got to do is think about it a little. Did you know that? Yeah, I knew it. Oh, I... man. <laughs> really? Yeah. You just know wow. not, no, no, the no. wavelength of the visible spectrum? No, no, no. By heart. Not all of them. Just like very specific <laughs> Just colors. 464. No. <laughs> I mean, I'll be glad to know this in the future for no reason, but I don't really know why I should know it already. No, th yeah, there's a reasoning for it. It's just like you I'm know the try. you know the full spectrum. Yeah. Okay. You know certain colors are higher frequencies, certain colors are lower frequencies. I do know that. I don't know how many nanometers they are, but I know you don't need to know anything in between. You only need to know those two. Four hundred sixty-four. Four sixty-four. This sucks. <laughs> Overwatch two is canceled. We'll be right back. We're just not doing trivia, so we're just all getting zero points. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, welcome back. Um, this is a conversation I feel like we've been meaning to have for a while. Um, Twitter alternatives. They've been popping up absolutely everywhere. Oh, boy. There's a million different ones. Here we go. Some of us have tried some. Some of us has, haven't. I think within this room, everybody's tried at all of these. At least one person's tried at least all of these. So I figured let's let's go over all of them. Yeah. Let's see what people think of them. I think some people have had a little too much fun on some of these, and we will go over that. What do you mean? <laughs> um, what do you mean? So, um, yeah, let's do it. I, I've got I've got in here. I've got likes and dislikes for. Yeah, I've tried a couple. Um, okay. Also, the first one is you guys keep talking about Lemon Eight. That is not one, right? Because I tried to go to it, and it did not seem like Twitter no. at all. No, Lemon Eight. For those unfamiliar, we can just go over this one quick. It's it's more of like a Instagram slash TikTok thing. Okay. It's like you. I don't. I guess you could post text, but it's it's very visual. Okay. It looks like a like a Pinterest board of an explore page of like images and swiping through things, and also videos and short form stuff. It's like it's like it's like Instagram. Okay, I just kept hearing the name around this time when all yeah. these were coming out, and just assumed it was before. one. Yeah, Lemonade. I think Adam and Marquez have talked about it a bunch. Okay, I'm gonna Next say that one. I'm gonna say for each one how many followers I have on each one. Oh, flex. To give slash. you no, actually no. This is for con, this is purely for context. So you can get a an True, idea because I've joined these all around the same time and I've done about the same amount of activity on each one of them, and they okay. all have different scales. Okay, lemonade. I have sixty five followers on lemonade. Just keep that in the back of your head. That's the first one. Okay, so that's photos only. It's like Instagram uh, video. I got I got some shorts on there. Oh. <laughs> Oh, you're posting on it too. Yeah, I'm posting on all these. Oh. All, ones, all the ones that I'm on anyway. You can tell how many I'm on. So lemonade, <laughs> 65 people. Okay, next up. Okay. I think Mastodon's the first one that everyone was really talking about. Sure. And I kind of think Adam's used it the most out of everyone. Yes. I currently use it exclusively. Really? Yeah. We get Whoa. asked all the time. I think we have a subreddit post like every month. Like, why isn't everyone on Mastodon? Hmm. I'm on Mastodon. Are somewhere. you? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. If you have to say sort of. That's a no. Yeah. Mastodon is the only one I am not on. Okay. Somebody was impersonating me on it for a while. I think I do remember I remember hearing about Mastodon and then immediately hearing about somebody impersonating you with like a verified check mark. And Mastodon I was like, Mastodon started oh, okay. popping up. There were people who were like, I am the new MKBHD on Mastodon. Follow me here. I am not on Twitter anymore. Like just Who would ever impersonate <laughs> anyone on one of those things? That's yeah. <laughs> terrible. Yeah, we'll figure that out. Uh no, so I'm not on Mastodon, but is that Mastodon? You guys are. Yeah, this is Mastodon. So what is like good about Mastodon? Please explain. <clears throat> Adam should be the arbiter of It does look here. kind of like Twitter. Mastodon is just Twitter. It's like... Uh, if it was just Twitter, I'd probably be on it. No, it's <laughs> it's Twitter like with less eight people. years ago. Yeah, with a lot less people, a yeah. lot less of the cool features and things like that. But the the like big thing about it is That's that so there's a bunch of different servers. It it's white? very decentralized. So That's you the... sign a, you log in and you sign up with okay. a server specifically, like a Discord server. Basically, yeah. That's like a I, subreddit. Me, it's more like Discord service. To me, it's easier to think about it like Discord service. It's not. So people are going to yell at me. Okay. I know it's, it's not. Like a really that's like slow the easy Discord way to server. think about it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but it's the service analogy is because if you sign up on one Mastodon server and someone else signs up on a different Mastodon server, you two will never see each other or follow each other or interact with each other. No, you can't. You can. You can. Yeah. Okay, so what's the difference between different servers? It's just you're being different, hosted on a different yeah, server. Yeah, you're just hosted on a different server. The There's idea, different rules and different content moderations and different things that each server can do. So yeah. like they have the rules like subreddits, uh -huh. where if you're on this subreddit, you can only abide by these rules. Mm -hmm. But then you can still see, if you choose to, see everyone's... So people get to abide by different rules depending on what server depending they're on? Depending on the server. So you get kicked off or blocked or anything depending on which server you're on. So if I interact with someone's Mastodon post, that only exists on one of the servers? Or that's not... That doesn't make sense. No, it would... This is it confusing. Gets, you can with. see it. So the idea is that it's decentralized, right? Yeah. The The idea is that Twitter cool. is a company that owns Twitter.com. They they own the servers that everyone uses yes. Twitter.com okay. on. Okay, right. That means that they get to make the rules. They get to moderate everything. They get Twitter to set Twitter is everything. centralized. Twitter is centralized. Yes. Um, the reason that these decentralized social media apps have been popping up is that people don't want there to be one point of control for the rules of a social media platform because a lot of people think that social media is sort of like a public good at this point mm. and that anyone should be able to come up with their own hosted servers that you can run on. Okay. So the idea of Mastodon is that 
everybody can see each other's um, toots. Is that what they call them? Yeah, they're toots. There's no way it's mm. called toots. What do you mean? <laughs> That's the greatest marketing ever. Yeah. It's a toot. Mm. How cute is that? Yeah. God, imagine so, having a worse name. It's kind Sweet. of like a global RSS feed that is just being hosted on different servers. And because it's hosted on different servers, you can't like get it taken down by some authoritarian government if it's being hosted by some guy oh. in his basement. So you know? no rules means there's probably way more crazy stuff and crazy corners of it. I guess also the, the, <laughs> the person who's hosting probably. it, though, is, a, I'm assuming, going to abide by the laws of the the land they live in oh. correct um so I then do does that mean, feel like it what if the th server is in a if you pitch this to me i would be like i'm buying drugs on this this is <laughs> like kind of the same way that rss is that this you can feels just like have an so rss feed it's like a global it's rss is rss yeah. centralized no no okay yeah yeah it's a uh, just a standard. So there's yeah, no RSS is just a standard. Yeah, and that's the same thing that this runs on ActivityPub, which is just the standard. Yeah, the idea is that social media should just be a protocol and not individual websites that you sign up for like that email. are owned by companies. It should you be can like email, email anyone from Gmail to Outlook, and they'll get the email. So yeah, but I don't yeah. have to look at racist people in my email. Well, you might get some, but Gmail or... might spam it out. If you use a different email, it might not have any spam filters or nothing. Yeah. Once we get to Blue Sky, I'll talk about why I think Blue Sky's implementation of, Earth, of everything is a little bit better than Mastodon. Also, Mastodon's very confusing, because when you sign up for it, it it's like, like it. what mm -hmm. server do you want to join? Dot .social? Dot .tech? Dot at, and it's like, yeah, yeah right? finally confused. Just change that. How but, many yeah. servers are there? Can you just make a uh, server? You can just you Mozilla want. just made one like a week ago. ago. So it's what just, happens you know, if I join the I Mozilla know. server? You're just on it. You can you could do that if you want. You can be on several. We no. could have. I, I could, mean, you can if you want, but you can only be like one account. If you want to use your main like MKBHD account, you would have to pick one. We could technically host an MKBHD server if we wanted, but mm -hmm. we would have to maintain and run that server. And when we got a lot of users on our server, it would cost money. This we, is not for everybody. No, it's <laughs> I'm the, this is so the, confused. This it's is a the big biggest, commitment to make a to like run a server like that. Yeah. The biggest difference between centralized and decentralized anything is sort of like the level of complexity that you want to have users jump into. Mastodon I, is definitely too complicated for its own good. And I think that's its biggest problem. Mm -hmm. I think Blue Sky, which we'll get to in a little bit, kind of like merges that a little bit, makes it a little bit simpler. It's still a little too complicated, but I think it's a little simpler. OK, yeah. Yeah, I don't really have much else on Mastodon. I mean, I feel like the I agree in like principle with the decentralized upsides. It just the more competition we have and the more specialized each platform is, it kind of doesn't matter if it's centralized or not. They're all different. So that's why uh, things like ActivityPub, which is what Mastodon uses as its protocol, mm -hmm. are supposed to basic. If everyone uses the ActivityPub protocol. You should be able to post on Mastodon and it shows up on any other application that uses the activity pub protocol because social me they want to make social media not a right. website and a website and a website. They want to just make social media one protocol so you can post one thing and it shows up everywhere on the internet. If it you choose might, to. Yeah. It's it might like be RSS. too late because like social media, so, so social media is like a bunch of walled gardens and a bunch of competitive companies. A bunch of businesses. That's what yeah. people are trying to break. I don't. I do think it might be too late. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I think it's too late. Like, everyone who wants to break this probably wants to make a ton of money also. And but then people that's are going kind to... of seeing this moment as, like, the opportunity to try it. Yeah. Because of Twitter. Because of Twitter. Crazy, Twitter the small Facebook social network. Facebook owns everything. And, yeah. yeah. Like, I YouTube, yeah. Facebook, there's so many gigantic walled gardens that are never going to... I mean, they're they're centralized. That's the that's the point. Yep. So they have, then they're they're incentivized to like make better features and and better comp competitive things to make you want to use it. Mm -hmm. And if they make bad decisions or have bad features or bad rules, then technically that should hurt them. Yeah. And as they try to grow and get better, that should matter. Yeah. So I they're. Think the argument, though, is that some of these, like YouTube, for example, is like too big. Like if YouTube really decides tomorrow they want to do something yeah. to like hurt the users, where do you go? No, no. I. That's why it's Video. like, that's why this is a weird <laughs> thing to kind of talk about. Maybe why we haven't talked about it for so long is like, I'm not trying to argue for these giant corporations that have all this control. But I, like totally decentralized and unmoderated also seems like you know a what? terrible yeah. place that well, I don't really want to be a part. Depending on the server. Depending on the server. It's just they have different moderation rules. It almost yeah, but it sounds like you can go to ones that don't have rules. You can, but then who's going to be running that? Is that someone you want to align yourself with? Do you really want your account on that server? But <laughs> yeah. those people are still on that same 
area. Yeah, I there's guess. always going to be see bad them. people kind of like <laughs> off in a corner somewhere doing things. You just don't subscribe to them. Discord <laughs> is like a them. combination of these things where you can have your own Discord server, but you don't host it. It's still centralized in Discord. Discord yeah. You just happen to make subject. your Discord rules. still has terms of service. You're subject though. to Discord's terms right. of service. There's like a rules. ton. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's kind of a hybrid. And I think that's why a lot of people have been joining Discord re- like in the last year or so is because it's kind of it's really easy to do. It's really easy to make a group, but you don't have to go through any of the complexity of any of this stuff. This is also making me realize that maybe we should do, if not a long form, at least like an explainer episode on like Activity Pub and like the decent the future of the decentralized social platforms. Yeah. If Here's, it's even gonna be around though, because who knows if it's just like a flash in a the thing, bucket. I think you know? it, it feels like it is to me yeah. because you were, we're mentioning that these are Twitter alternatives. Yeah. And you're talking about like, what if YouTube made some huge drastic decision that like really harmed the users? My partially naive but actually partially kind of true argument is that's impossible because there it's such a big ship with so many people doing so many things that have it has to make all the way up the ladder and so many decisions have to be made that there's no way that one person making one terrible decision could take down the whole thing the way that happened to twitter it's just too big like YouTube couldn't make one decision to ruin to burn down the whole shit. What if Google was like, mm, YouTube doesn't make enough money anymore. We're shutting it down. I, I don't Unlikely. see that happening. Yeah. I don't see that it's happening. It's too powerful and too useful to throw it down, even if it doesn't make money. It's yeah. the world's online video library. Yeah. You know, I don't yeah. disagree. I don't with disagree. You, but, I, but I like. I it's, do understand the fear of having. It feels sure. like it's not one person, but like it's one entity that has definitely, like definitely. the the rule over yeah a lot and potentially too much. I think um, the thinking but, too is like now is Twitter, so Twitter is going through this whole thing. People are trying to figure out what to do. Facebook owns Instagram, which is the other big yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. They own WhatsApp. I and totally people are agree, scared yeah. of that. So like, if one by one these things start to like hurt the users, yeah. one mm-hmm. by one there will be these alternatives, and that's what I think people are trying to like prepare for. Yeah. I also yeah. think the idea is like, re- remember from the secret history of the internet episode a couple of weeks ago, TCPIP, mm-hmm. right? Everyone got on this one protocol and you can build out from TCPIP. You can make all this other stuff just based on this one open protocol. Um, and if the if social media could go a similar direction where everyone used the exact same thing and it was just so easy to just like build off of other people's stuff. It does sound pretty great. That's what people... That's like a future that people that sparkle in their eyes. That would be great if there was just one yeah. huge social media, and it was your videos and your short form and your text blobs and your blog posts and your whatever. Everything right. is just one big social media. Uh-huh. So that sort of moves us to Blue Sky. Okay, um, Blue Sky uses what's called the at protocol, and there it, it's it's a good name for a protocol. I think it's literally the at sign. Yeah, at blah blah blah. And their kind talk. of concept is that you mind. have a handle that is being hosted on your own web like your own website or like something like that you can sign up for some app blah 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 at bluesky.social mm-hmm. at bisky.social right but yes. if you own if you own your own website like i own davidml.com right i i got to i can now host my blue sky account on davidml.com technically mm-hmm. so now my blue sky account is just at it's at davidml.com. It's not just at davidml.bluesky.social. Mm-hmm. So it's being hosted by my own website, which means the app protocol is like, if you own your domain, you should just be able to, u- that's like a way to verify you, right? Because uh, if Amazon owns amazon.com, everyone knows Amazon owns amazon.com. So, so if on all social media platforms, <laughs> amazon.com was just at amazon.com, that's kind of a verified badge without having to use a verified badge. So I'm following some I'm people. Good. I'm just looking through who I'm following. And I see you're at davidml.com. I'm mm-hmm. following Casey Neistat. He is at casey.nyc. Everyone, Adam Molina is at adammolina.com. But others who do not Man. own their own URL. Yeah, Gogur didn't even pay for like, their own. <laughs> <laughs> unverified, in air quotes, uh-huh. are at dot .bsky.social. Dot right. Because okay. this guy knows that most people aren't like a yeah, lot of yeah. people don't even own their own websites for sure most yeah, a lot most people don't own their own yeah. <laughs> weird <laughs> <laughs> um but they know that in order to onload like onboard people onto this social media platform they do have to host servers to an extent mm-hmm. so this is also kind of a weird hybrid 
like environment where yes they run blue sky and it is kind of operated by them and it is not run by the people like mastodon is but the idea would be eventually maybe everyone gets their own account hosted on other servers and then blue sky doesn't even have to make money mm. you know i don't know the, yeah it's very complicated far yeah forward. Get, it's complicated not so. making money feels like would be the I know in some euphoric world where <laughs> everyone will do a bunch of work on things and not make any money. That yeah. sounds wonderful. But I feel like the minute we start talking about things not making a lot of money, it feels like it's going to die. To there me. are awesome open source projects and stuff that people will use that make no money and people just devote stuff to. But the problem is people will always fork that open source project and figure out how to make money from the forked yeah. version. That mm -hmm. always happens. Yep. And then the money you can use for advertising to get more user base and all of these benefit on user bases. So yeah. like, I think that's the biggest hurdle. Also, wait, can I just, this Blue Sky app logo, is that what they're really gonna use? Is the worst logo. That is a great the question. Logo. It is it's so horrible. Bad. The current it's logo so is just bad. like, a, it's it's a, just like a blue sky with clouds. It just looks like, I mean, I get it makes I, sense, but like man, it, it looks so bad the compared to all the other things. It's like, so refreshing. It's terrible. <laughs> nice. It's, I don't, it's, I don't, I also, pollen in there. It's also, when you good. go to the Blue Sky website in browser, it shows an app icon that's different. Or well, that's it did when I first went to it. Yeah, it shows just it shows three birds in a square. Mine is clouds in a circle. <laughs> I thought I was downloading the wrong thing. Hmm. Yeah. Not great. So Don't Blue Sky it. looks almost exactly like Twitter. I was going to say, I've been using it a little bit. I've had it for three weeks. It functionally is Twitter. Yeah. The um, the differentiator Minus for messages. Blue Sky is that they were able to get like a lot of journalists on it. They were able to, like really quickly, they were able oh, to get a lot here. of famous people. Basically, a lot of the really, really followed Twitter users, they were able to get on Blue Sky. And mm. that got a lot of people that created a lot of hype for blue sky they use an invite system yeah. right now mm -hmm. and you only get one invite every two weeks so it's very slow rollout Jeez. Yeah. Um, one invite every yeah, two how do i weeks? tell if i have an invite Jeez. it'll okay. when you go to your profile page it'll show the invite codes on the left side there's no messages oh on i have a code yeah there's no messaging so far which is pretty annoying you can't block people on this app uh can't block yeah. people yet oh no you can they oh, added can. yeah they oh, added, they added, a added you can block people <laughs> oh fire so <laughs> i do it really interesting to like watch evolve because the, there's a following tab and a what's hot tab yeah i wish that there was not a what's hot tab because i Dude, just kind of it's just porn it. pretty much yeah or blue was sky. for a while yeah on blue sky because there's so few users there still are way more users than t2 which we'll get to after <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um but because there's so few users you kind of have to use the what's hot tab to like see who you want to follow but whatever is hot people will just start kind of like adding on to and it becomes a trend oh, no. and they'll be like the trend of the day so one day people just started posting their butts and then everyone yeah. started posting their butts nice um can i well, why is <laughs> cool, cool. how come when i'm looking at this some people's display names are f like full display names like there's alex wolf uh-huh and then marquez is like gets cuts like, cut off. like john renger just says joe j-o <laughs> yeah, hayato's is hayat that's like, weird it just it looks like that's only on the Android app because uh, on the Evergreen Evergreen <laughs> yeah because on Havard the, at LOL yeah yeah I, yeah I don't know I was enjoying it and then the what's hot tab was because yeah. there wasn't that many people on it for, yeah like this yeah is when there wasn't a lot of tits. people on it the what's hot tab was fine <laughs> um but a bunch now of boats. a big reason that Twitter has been annoying me so much recently is is the the Twitter's new what's hot tab or whatever it's called. Yeah. yeah. Which trending, is like the trending. default. Yeah. I hate it. It feels like TikTok it's slash. Awful. It's just like There's a reason me for it's that. meme pages and porn. <laughs> it's basically all Twitter. It's the most engaged with things they could possibly throw it's at you. It's so annoying. Yeah. It's not anything I'm interested in. Twitter's following tab, they like don't refresh that often. Like they don't update it that often. And yeah, you so, have to refresh I, it yourself. Yeah, well, even when I do refresh it myself, it feels like I don't see new tweets all the time. Hmm. I don't know. There's some weird stuff. Also, the, I used to refresh by double tapping the home bike button on the bottom, then exactly. rather having to scroll. Well, if you double tap, it like refreshes quick and then slides over to what's new. And then <laughs> I hate it so hot. much. Right. What's hot? Yeah. I'll right. give you. I'll leave you with this context. Uh, I started this three weeks ago. I have 839 followers on oh, yeah. Blue Sky. That's not bad. That's Wait, how many? Solid. Oh no, you're not on Mastodon. That's yeah. okay. more than the amount of uh, users that were on T2 when we first got on it. <laughs> that is a fact. So let's finish this up with T2. 
T2 <laughs> uh, is also, it's literally made by a bunch of people who formerly worked at Twitter, uh-huh. uh, which is why it's called T2. They all lovingly refer to Twitter as T1. They don't say the word. Oh. They just call it T1 and T2. So T2, uh, it's a, a very basic, I believe, desktop web only version of uh, of social media with text. Can I interject right there? Mm-hmm. That's the one thing I found interesting between these two. So I've tried Blue Sky and T2, and it's like you're using one on web and one on uh, mobile, mobile and then you realize like, I really want the other one. Once you don't have it, you're like, I wish I could go on yeah, the other totally. version. Because like when I'm at work, I'm always on browser on Twitter. It's just so much easier. Yeah. But I'm always on my phone anywhere else for Twitter, which I check a lot. So mm-hmm. the fact that both of them are subject to only one version of it well, feels awful. Blue Sky does have a staging app for desktop. Do they? Yeah, you can, okay. it's staging.bluesky.bsky.social. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I know. <laughs> now, so. didn't they change it to like dot .app or something? The uh, dot .app, yes. Staging.bsky.app. Uh, anyway, talking about T2, uh, started by a bunch of ex-Twitter employees that got fired by Elon. Um, or if, left. If you want to know anything about Allegedly. T2, all you need to know is that if you go to t2.social, it is basically our team. Um, <laughs> all of us are. When I go team. to t2.social, I'm not logged in. It's two Marquez tweets, nice. one from Ellis. Not tweets. Uh, T2s. Oh, what are they called? Tooties. T2. Actually, toots makes way more sense on T2. It does. Two. There's two T's in it. Twos. T2 There's isn't the two final t- name, though. Wait, but what? Oh, it's not? Yeah, no, yeah. they haven't released the, the actual These things oh, are all so confusing. Okay, yeah. um, There's Ellis, who got the handle at dad. Yeah, a lot of these just don't have enough users yet. It seems like Blue Sky is kind of snowballing towards getting more and more users seems like the closest to the being closest to being a real twitter alternative to right. any of them yeah right now blue sky feels like all the people who either stopped using twitter or said they were going to stop using twitter mm-hmm. went to blue sky and are um and are blue skying over there sure <laughs> <laughs> and there are a few yes. users who are getting like a lot of engagement um like casey newton gets like a thousand likes on every every blue sky post which is cool yeah um but all of these others are just having problems, and I don't know. I, people are still on Twitter. Twitter is still technically growing. I think Twitter's still winning. I, Twitter's, Twitter's Twitter is definitely, definitely still, still winning. winning. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say. My so, main concern for Twitter is if they're just gonna like default on their loans and eventually like close the servers down. There's a lot of concerns with Twitter. I yeah, feel yeah. like I found trying all these new ones. I just go to all of them a lot less. Mm-hmm. I use Twitter way less than I used to. I feel like I'm mostly using it at work to keep up with stuff and to write stuff for the podcast and. Still some fun people to follow, but I look at it on my phone so much less. I'll say I uh, you have a little user ID when you sign up for T2, which is actually just the, the number of your joining the site. Mm-hmm. So I'm user ID number 630, and there I think there's like 1,200 people on this website. Yeah. So there's that. Mm-hmm. I have 298 followers on T2. Mm-mm. So there you go. That's T2. Uh, I, there's this other one actually that I, I didn't tell you guys about, but I did want to bring up. Uh, it has basically all the same users as Twitter. It has millions of users. It has video uploading, text uploading. Uh, it has ads. They're starting to do ads a little bit now. Um, Substack notes. Basically, every politician is on it. Uh, ESPN is on it. A lot of NBA players are on it. It's it's popping off is what I'm trying to say. Mm. Um, it's got some business concerns, but mm. as of right now, it's got the best service, I think. It's called Twitter. Um, and I don't know. You should try it. You should I thought you were going to say YouTube. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's just, uh, it's called Twitter. Um, I have, I think there's probably a couple million people over there. Yeah. It's, it's pretty solid. You should, you should give it a look. If yeah. You want. It's centralized though, which is pretty unfortunate. Yeah. So yeah, there's that. Well, wow. anyway, and it's on fire. I it's would be, <laughs> I would be happy if Twitter didn't, you know, actually burn to the ground eventually, because I do like Twitter. I have spent like. 12 years growing like a like a community over there and it just kind of sucks if if that ends up going under you know i've had very good years on twitter you're very talking good to time. somebody who built up a loyal google plus <laughs> yo like, bring it back like a very very solid google plus how did following. that feel having that fall to the ground uh it was unfortunate it was unfortunate yeah we kind of saw it was like a jenga tower where you could like if you're at the top of the tower you could look down and you could see like the bricks starting to f- come out from the bottom and you're like this is not going to end well yikes so media, we had time social media platforms are temporary but circles are forever marquez you you always know i don't think they are circles well 
the the st- the structure of Google Plus uh, right. lives on. Mm. Bring it back. Lives on. I will yeah. just say, if Google Plus was built on ActivityPub, you would have all those followers still. It yeah. just follows you. Adam, do you like ActivityPub or the App Protocol more? Probably the App Protocol. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've talked a lot about Twitter alternatives, and so to finish the alliteration, trivia. Twitter trivia tra- alternatives. We've talked a lot and gone nowhere about Twitter alternatives. <laughs> <laughs> What did we expect? <laughs> That's that might be the title for this just, episode. Uh, yeah. Just like all of these alternatives. <laughs> They've talked a lot and gone nowhere. <laughs> oh my god. All right. So yesterday, Andrew and I shot a really funny video. And last night I went home and I put a bunch of the footage we shot of that video on my CRT. And all of this will make sense later, but it looked Whoa. hilarious and weird. Um and that inspired How did you do that? Uh, maybe that's another studio channel video, (laughs) but, um, so it inspired today's CRT themed trivia question, which is a complete component AV signal requires five cables, three video cables and two audio cables. Can you name all five colors? Of those cables. You don't remember plugging the cables into the back of your TV? I do. And what colors they were? Re- I do remember. I was born in 1993. So you still have like 20 <laughs> years before an HDMI cable in your hand. I think I know these. Never owned any. There's. Oh, yeah. I think I I think I know all of them, actually. I don't know if I know all five, but. Well, there's one I definitely point know four. per color. One point per color. One point per color? Yeah. That's brutal. That's insane. I'm getting destroyed. That's by gonna this jack one. the heck out of these points. Wow, There's five. That's um, an opportunity for you it guys is. to. You catch could just up start to me. naming colors. Component AV. Component AV. So remember, composite AV. Remember, <laughs> was red, yellow, white. Exactly. Well, oh, what? That's Wait, the, don't say this out loud. Compos- yeah, aren't you <laughs> saying them out? No, no, no. Composite AV is red, yellow, composite. white. Composite. That's the three. That's the three cable one. We're talking the. Fu- Remember when you got your Xbox 360 yeah, and you were okay. like, "Oh, I can do this in HD." I now. think a GameCube had it, possibly. Okay, let's not say anything more. Anyway, okay, that's the question. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. What if I told you you could get a free 55-inch 4K TV? Free? All it requires is all of your data. <laughs> all of my data. And a lot of ads. Deal. Fine. <laughs> sure. Wait, at, more ads than normal? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> technically, yes. Te- there's literally an extra screen to feed you ads. Yeah. So there's Where? this new TV that is being launched by the same guy that made Pluto TV, which I don't know if you guys have heard of that before. Nope. It's basically cable, but through streaming. They have a channel for effectively every single show that has ever been evered. And there's just like a home improvement show. There is a Star Trek The Next Generation show. Or channel. Sorry, channel. There's a home improvement channel, Star Trek The Next Generation channel, a Rugrats channel. And it just runs like episodes. And it's a regu- It's like regular cable TV where it has chunks where it plays episodes one by one. You this can't is- select what you're playing. You can only select the show. This is legal? That's the yeah. first thing I asked. How much does it cost, David? <laughs> Zero dollars. What? Pluto? But, yeah, Pluto TV. How? Are so there, Samsung. Oh, but there's there's ad breaks. There's ad breaks. It's exactly the same oh. as cable, where they play ads, and that's how they pay the licensing. Well, except a lot except of they charge you for cable, and you have to watch <laughs> ads. Cable, yeah, cable well, is the worst deal, actually, because yeah. you have to pay for it, and you watch ads. I mean, but you're saying none of this is live TV. It's just shows. Yeah. Like if, say just, live if the TV game was on, I could I guess, watch it on Pluto. Oh, no, no, no. Live no. TV and I guess like new episodes. I'm assuming they're not getting the next episode of... Uh, I doubt it. It's not like... TV show that's It's not like when you're on cable the new and you're watching, you're watching Nickelodeon and they're like, next Thursday we're playing yeah. the biggest new episode of SpongeBob. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. That, that doesn't happen on Pluto. It's, it's more of a like, backlog of just like backlog. straight running through. It's like it's if like, you left Netflix on Keep Playing mm-hmm. and it never This like a worse version of YouTube. Uh, YouTube well, doesn't have YouTube like doesn't have licensed shows. shows though. Yeah, you can't watch like SpongeBob episode four, the entire thing on YouTube. Or, okay, unless but, somebody's but like turning can't... it, mirroring it, and changing the pitch in the volume. Nice. Or but, whatever. but you can't do that on Pluto either. You can just watch SpongeBob, and they'll serve you. Yeah, they'll, they serve yeah. you SpongeBob. Yeah, and but, you'll hope you get the episode you're hoping yeah. to watch. But okay. during COVID, um, when I was living with Michael Fisher, we I would just randomly walk in at like two a.m. and he would just be like. <laughs> 
<laughs> like out on the couch with three different folding phones with on. three different folding phones on his face us usually asleep with like star trek the next generation playing on pluto tv that's and it, an, would, it would just cycle star trek beautiful. ad star trek ad got it anyway back to the tv yeah so this service um the pluto tv service is is not very new we we watched this a lot during covid mm-hmm. um and there's also i think samsung tv is basically the same thing and it's built into all samsung smart tvs they basically have a similar there, service it, yeah. yeah i've seen that but the guy that started Pluto is literally going to be making a TV. It's a 4K 55-inch TV that this. has two displays. Actually looks really attractive. Mm-hmm. Uh, very thin bezels with a big sound bar built in right below the main TV. And then a second display that shows things like stock tickers, sports team scores. And then the bottom right corner mm. just has a constantly cycling ad. Cool. Yeah, it, it actually says... So that it can display ads and there also are widgets that can show that. So I don't know right. if it's always that or you pick the widgets or if the ad, I can only assume the ad can also take over that entire screen. Yeah, so you don't put duct tape over that corner. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but okay. it's called Tele. Um, it uses Tele OS and it has a bunch of inputs. You can add things like, you know, your Apple TV, your Switch, whatever. It's basically a TV, but <laughs> it has a really long terms of service. Mm-hmm. Uh, the terms of service basically says that it has to be connected to your Wi-Fi connection at all times. You cannot disconnect it from Wi-Fi for more than like a few minutes. Or what? It stops working? Basically, they will force you to send it back or they will charge you $500. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff. Basically, if it, my Wi-Fi goes down, which it has gone down for 24 hours, what? I'm sure they can figure that They'll probably stuff work out. with you. Uh, I'm sure they can do that. So like okay. they say, if we discover you're not abiding by the requirements above or have disconnected the product from an internet connection or Wi-Fi for more than short periods each month, you will no longer be able to use the service and you must return any products in your possession hmm. or else you get a $500 fine. Yeah. Um, and there's also like what I find really funny is you can opt out of data sharing which just means then they'll shut the TV off and then you have to return it or else you pay a $500 fine, yeah. which I think is wild. But I mean, let, let's be, we all understand that the re- way they're making money on this is selling Ads. the data. Yeah. And like I, for free, sure. sure. That's that's like an, an interesting way of doing this. I, I do want to know, when you return the TV, are you paying or are they giving you a return? No label? idea. Because <laughs> returning a 55-inch TV is not, not easy. Cheap. So Definitely save the box if anyone decides to do this. It's also at freetelly.com, which if I got a text message randomly that said like, <laughs> get a free TV at freetelly.com, I'd be like, the amount of- Terrible domain. The malware I would be getting from that website yeah. would be yeah. wild. Um, also, when you say data, you mean my TV watching data? It's a combination of stuff. Well, and the ads they're serving you and like if you're- they do. There's a camera on the TV that does have a privacy filter. That's already oh. that's turned off. Like the privacy filter is over the camera by default. Yeah, but I think you have to like open it up for certain things. I'm a little confused <laughs> on that part. It de- they're definitely yeah, collecting it, uh, and the username yeah. you need you use I think has to be like your name or something. Like oh. it can't Jeez. abide by someone else. Oh, yeah. I don't like so you anyone. can't use all fake Damn. information. So if you're in a position where you can't afford a nice TV and you. You know, you are looking to get one and you're okay with dishing out all your your user information, with, which let's be real, all of us kind of are on the internet already. So, like, yeah. it, it, this feels like a step further. Um, to this unknown company. Listen, if that's the sacrifice <laughs> you want to make to have a 55-inch 4K TV, and I know there are people out there that would do that, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, the thing is, do you guys use Roku TV by any chance? I don't know. No. I have a Roku TV. It's like one of the best selling TVs, like the TCL Roku yeah. ones. Yeah. They already do this and you're paying for the TV. Like they take your data and sell it. So I'm wondering how much data yeah. is this thing taking? Right. <laughs> I am wondering. Yeah. They did also, I found this really interesting. There's a part where it says um, ads might utilize both displays when you're not using the TV. So does that Why? mean when I have it off? Is there just going to be a double screened full ad for oh, Pepsi on my, in my living I room? When I, that's I'm a deal breaker like, yeah. for me. That, that feels that that's feels a little weird. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm not a fan of that. That's a deal breaker. Yeah. So it has advanced sensors that it says for fitness and interactive gaming, HD camera for video calling, mic array. It's, it's got to connect. The more you say about this TV, the worse it sounds. Yeah. So it's got like biometrics. Yeah. It's like looking at me on the couch <laughs> and I have to share that data associated with my real name. Yeah. I don't one, like it. one of their quotes are hundreds of things we are thinking about to create the most engaging ad experience ever, <laughs> which is the last thing I want for most my corporate television. thing I've ever. Yeah, heard. you know what I always thought about? Like, technically, 
if you asked me, do you want no one to have any of your data, but none of the ads will be, they'll, they won't make any sense to you. You'll just get like an ad for Pampers and then an ad for vegetables and then an ad for contact lenses, like nothing makes any sense. Or do you want ads to actually make sense to you? And I guess if you gave me the choice, I would say I'd rather have ads that do make sense well, so that is, I can find things that I actually like. This is literally the Facebook, like, would you like to allow the site to track you button that Apple messed up for Facebook last year? Yeah. Was I like, because Facebook's whole angle was like, do you want just random ads that are being thrown at you that have nothing to do with you? Like, right. you know, because I turned it off. I turned off uh, ad tracking just to see what would happen. I started getting ads for like, lingerie things that don't make any sense like yeah. i'm <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah things that make no sense for me and um when i turn back sure, on i start getting David, make no sense <laughs> <laughs> but it's wow uh when i turn it back on i start getting ads for like film camera stuff you know right like i'm not sense. gonna say i'm immune to ads like i have gotten ads for things where i've gone oh yeah i'm gonna get one i bought a pair of pants from an ad i got once which is like I get got Whatever. all the time. I got got. Yeah, I just bought happen. a Ninja Creamy. I got influenced so damn I got influenced. hard. It was exactly. rough. Yeah. yeah. So is that? I guess. Yeah. If you just want to turn hard. that dial all the way up, this is your this is your product. Yeah. The funny thing is the TV actually looks kind of dope, dude. I love I love the second screen on it. To yeah. be honest, like if I could do that without ads and control some cool stuff on it there, like if sick. I could watch hockey and then have other hockey scores scores on the bottom or well, whatever the thing is, like you that can like sick. you can opt out of everything and they just charge you five hundred dollars and like five hundred bucks for a oh so you 4K can buy if it's good that's screen tv doesn't and have seem, a normal experience well you can't buy it you can I opt so. out and then not return it and then pay the fee and but no the if they said if you opt out it will shut off services though i think so i don't can't use it at all I'm sure there's some hacky way of doing it. We yeah, within see a that. year, Samsung is going to make a dual screen with a soundbar in the middle TV just like this, and it's going to be awesome. Yeah, I would love. To, yeah, <laughs> like true. watching F1, and it has the all the race, like the leader and everything underneath that, and yeah, times that and would be sectors incredible. and stuff. Like, there's yeah. so many cool things that could be down there. Dual is screens. this just a touch bar for a computer? Mm. It's better, <laughs> but you can't touch it. I mean, it. it does depend on like programming, taking advantage of the bar. But yeah, yeah it's, it's this is smart. more like the Asus uh, dual screen laptop that has that second yeah, yeah, yeah. display on the bottom. Yeah, yeah, I'm in. Back in the the 50s and 60s, it didn't really make it to the 70s, but you would find um, like two or three screen TVs where it would all be in one cabinet and you'd have one main display and then two sort of like fist sized displays. What? So the idea is that you could like be watching whatever program you watch and then like keep an eye on the game. Hmm. I like yeah. that. It's like picture. It's. It's hardware picture in picture. Sort of, yeah. Except you picture like a big, you know, wooden cabinet because it's yeah. the 50s and 60s. And then, you know, your main picture tube and then two sort of huh. smaller. I like that models. hardware picture in picture. Hard yeah, yeah, right? Picture out of picture. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's picture yeah. out of picture. Yeah, exactly. P.O.P. Pop. <laughs> picture, picture, picture. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, um, I do think there's some people that could benefit from this, but just know your life is out there pretty much. Mm -hmm. They're going to have everything on you. Um, Some advertisers going, but they're going to target you with the perfect ad. Yeah. They're going to hit you with the, are you hungry right now for sushi like you usually get at this hour on yes. this day? <laughs> yeah. We got you. Well, oh, that's, not, that's <laughs> yeah. probably You're usually it. on the couch eating Cheetos right now, but it looks like you're all out. <laughs> Would you like to order someone? <laughs> yeah. Completely compromise my privacy, but you know what? I do want some Cheetos right now. That's a good place to end it. <laughs> yeah. It's not sponsored. Uh, yeah, definitely not Could sponsored. Uh, we should we should answer our trivia questions, which of course are super, super easy this week. <laughs> Listen, last week we went too soft, so this week we had to bring the pain. Yeah. How is it too soft when I'm the only one that got the right answers? Don't don't question it. <laughs> it was just too <laughs> soft for me. To bring the pain for everyone. Yep. Blame David. Thank okay. You. Update That's on the scores. Evergreen. Marquez has 14. Andrew has 9. David has 15. Will Andrew get double digits well, by Andrew the end of the trivia season? <laughs> Will he get all five colors in Ellis's question? You could tie David. What, you don't think I can get the first question right? You could tie, tie me. Well, yeah. Six <laughs> you would only get one. <laughs> True. Yeah. Okay. So, the first question. The color at wavelength 464.2 <laughs> nanometers is what? That's basically what it all boils down to. I, I just... <laughs> this is gonna be so wrong, and I'm gonna get so laughed at by all those optical engineers. Do you out wanna? There. Do you wanna hint? 
Yes. No, no, you don't. No, want a hint. no hint. No, no, no hint. hint. I want to know the trick that like. It's not a trick. It's just like general knowledge thing. <laughs> general knowledge. That's what I'm. Very that's what we'll call this. General knowledge. General knowledge. knowledge. All right, flip him and read. Oh, what do you no, think? Man. I I uh, I put white, which is not a color. Nope. Yeah. Marquez, what'd you put? I wrote gray. Nope. That's a lantern. I wrote blue. Correct. How? Blue is that? I literally picked the easiest color I could yep. possibly think of. And the, the waiting color yeah. behind you is blue. How? That's know that? when you said. Oh well, hold on. God. When you no, said, no. "Do you want a hint?" I said no because I was like, "He's gonna say <laughs> something about these damn lights." Although I had blue in already. The I, hint was that seven hundred nanometers is red. That's at the other end. <laughs> Tell me of the visible spectrum. <laughs> I know that blue to like blue to infrared, Man. like blue to red is like the spectrum. Yeah. I, that's why I knew white was wrong. I just had no like I was like, that why was it. would Adam I just figured you can either I thought that you yeah. guys would choose either okay. blue or red. I like guess I, one end of the that spectrum. That was my I, that was my wrote main. red and cried. I, <laughs> I did I was like, I need to pick a simple I was gonna, color here, so there's like a thirty yeah. percent chance. I was gonna but, pick red and then I was like I didn't know I was surrounded those by Those are the only morons. two that I know. <laughs> it's just <laughs> You know what? I'm, I, I, yeah, Andrew, I'm, I'm proud for you. Thank you. Well you don't see me. <laughs> well you have validated. Andrew. I'm happy for you. <laughs> no, I am. No, I'm legitimately happy. It's for the you. smiling face mask with the tears behind it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, All now right. I know. Four hundred and what? Four hundred and sixty-four point two. And what is red? Red is around seven hundred. I don't know exactly the the actual point oh, two. That was just specifically right. for this general knowledge color gamut. It's around 400 to 500 is ultraviolet and blue, and 700-ish is red. That's I'm pulling that it. out of my next date. Just okay. to green. You know. There green you go. Green is. This just 600. feels like everything I learned in green. school. It's like you learn it till you write it on paper and, and forget it. Green, for the rest green is somewhere in the middle. I don't know what. Yeah, it's white's not a spectrum. A, white's all the colors. So yeah, that's the uh, first I thing I wrote, that. and then I wrote gray, and I'm like, that's not in the right. Gray is either. just a luminance level of white. Yeah, that's the thing. Obviously. Yeah. It's a, it's a, not a chroma, it's a luma. Next question. <laughs> All right, question two. A complete component AV signal requires five cables. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Three for video and two for audio. Can you name all five colors of those cables? We just talked about this not that long ago, so I better get this right. Did we? Like two weeks ago, this got brought up for some reason. What? Just Ellis and I were. No, 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 no. Just Ellis and I in the studio. You were studio. talking about component cables? Yeah. Because we were talking about S video. That's then right. Went, yeah. Wait, is there purple? This is absurd. I... Is there purple? I think there's purple. I'm <laughs> not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Right. I'm out of time. Jesus. I'm out of touch. You're out of time. You know what I'm saying? All right, who wants How? to read it first? Oh, wait. Okay, the circled I just ones. I a bunch of colors and then circled the ones that I think. So Marquez I picked, just learned that gray picked, is not a color. Yeah, red, green, and blue. Wait, for, you got to read them uh, one, more, one by one. By one for oh, me. okay. So for video, I picked red, green, and blue. And then for audio, I picked black and white. Uh, white is yeah, correct. Right. Oh. Right. Wait, we didn't have to name which ones they were, right? We just have to name no, five just, of them? I, I'll okay. five colors, just yeah. Just five. I got four out of five. Uh, not bad. It's All not right, Andrew. Andrew. All right, I've... Yeah. Red, yellow. Oh, no sound on that one. There we go. White, blue, green. Red, yellow, white, blue, green. Wow, I, I had a conniption there. There's no yellow. That's my bad. There's oh. no, wait, there's no yellow? There is no yellow in a component. Is signal. it purple? It's not purple. <laughs> okay. What did you write? Wait, hold on. Andrew, how many did you get? You yeah, got four out of five? Four. You got four out of five. Okay. Oh, yeah. Red, yellow, green, white, black. All right, I got three. Three for five? The last color the last component was a second red. Oh, what? yeah. There's two red cables. How do you get it right if you're plugging them in and there's Because two they're red. different shades, right? No, because one of them is red audio and one of them is red video. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Can you tell me the difference between component and composite? I would absolutely love to. So a composite... <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would. <laughs> I was teeing you up for that because I absolutely knew that you would just love to. So, you know how you can modulate multiple no. signals into one cable? Well, think of it this way, right? One eternity later. Red and luminance, the difference in blue and luminance, you're able to extract your green values, you know, via that equation. And then you have your full color signal. I like that I just learned that the 
components would be like the components of the signal. Yeah. And, and if anyone composite oh. is a composited. I always thought the there was components. just exactly. I always just thought there was another two colors that got added to the original three, the OG three. No. Um, no and it's, so it's, why does the right, composite cool. cable have two audio signals? Is it channels left, left and, and right. right? Yeah, it's left and right. Wow. Yeah. And if you really want to impress your date. Waveform <laughs> is produced by Adam, Elena, and Ellis Robin. We're partnered with the Vox Media Podcast Network, and our intro outro music was created by Vane Sill. Marquez also looks like he's just going to disappear. I want to know, though.